In this video, I'm going to be concentrating on the positive side of radioactive lenses. Why are they so good and who made them? Including online lists of radioactive lenses. This should be useful if you're wondering about the radioactivity of your own lenses. And I'll explain some of the quirks and surprises you might find in these lists. I'll also be taking a look at lenses with yellow glass, because I've found that not all radioactive lenses have yellow glass, and not all lenses with yellow glass are radioactive. I own 10 radioactive lenses, and some of the film era radioactive lenses are not just good lenses, they're great lenses, whether they have yellow glass or not. Radioactive glass tended to be used for faster or more prestigious specialist lenses, although there are numerous exceptions. In my collection of radioactive lenses, I have the fastest M42 lens made, the Tomioka 55 f1.2. It was sold under different brands, this one is an Auto Revinon. And two other Tomioka made lenses, the Yashika Yashinon DS50 1.7, and this Mamiya Seacore 55 f1.4, a similar lens to the much admired and also radioactive Auto Raikkonen. And then the excellent Carl Zeiss Jena Pancolor 50 f1.8, a really good lens. Its big sibling is the Pancolor 55 f1.4, a rare lens in all senses, and possibly one of the most impressive and also most radioactive lenses ever made. And the rest are the Takuma lenses, including this legendary Super Takuma 50 f1.4, the 8 element version. The reason why companies started to mix radioactive materials in with their glass is that tests show that adding materials such as thorium oxide increase the level of refraction of light through the glass with relatively low levels of dispersion. The result, to cut a long story short, was that lens designers could make lighter glass elements with less material than non-radioactive glass, and also gain advantages in terms of sharpness, colours, and reduced chromatic aberration. And with this discovery, a lot of brands around the world started to make and sell lenses with radioactive glass, beginning in earnest in the mid-1940s with Kodak lenses, and continuing for another 30 years or more. This wasn't something that happened only for a short period of time. There are lists of radioactive lenses on the internet, where you can see if any of your own lenses might be radioactive. This list from Camerapedia is an excellent place to start. As I scroll down the list, you can see how many of the top brands were selling radioactive glass, from the United States to Western and Eastern Europe and Japan. Some Russian lenses also use radioactive materials. For example, the Zenitar M50 f1.7 apparently has glass made with lanthanum. But lanthanum is not nearly as radioactive as thorium. And after testing my own Zenitar, I've not been able to pick up any meaningful radioactive measurements from the lens above background levels, so I've not included it amongst my radioactive lenses. There are some stunningly good lenses on this list, and maybe some of your own favourites, if you're into buying film-era lenses. The one thing I would say about lists on the internet is that they may not be complete or totally accurate, and the text on Camerapedia warns the reader about this too, not simply because there may be gaps in the lists, but because of the quirks of some lens makers, and I'm going to explain this by looking at my own radioactive lenses. So here they are again, starting with the Carl Zeiss Jena Pancolor 50 f1.8 in its zebra styling. My version of the Pancolor f1.8 has thorium glass, and you can clearly see the yellow brownish or golden glass in this clip, a discoloration that is commonly seen as characteristic of radioactive lenses. The first important point to note is that not all zebra Pancolor versions are radioactive, my lens looks almost identical to another non-radioactive zebra pancolor version. My radioactive version has eight blades, while I read that non-radioactive versions only have six blades. That's apparently the thing to look out for. However, I've seen vendors on the internet claiming that their six-bladed versions for sale are radioactive too, and their lenses appear to have yellow glass, but there's still no definitive way of telling it except by testing the lens, something I'll get onto a bit later. There are some other quirks about different lens copies in my collection, beginning with the Super Takuma 55 f1.8. It surprised me to find that it's not radioactive, because from tests and YouTube videos, some people have found that their copies of the lens are radioactive. However, my lens registered no radioactivity. It's quite an early copy, and it must have been made before doses of radioactive glass were introduced. And here's another quirk with a similar explanation, involving the Super Takuma 50 f1.4 8 elements version. From what I've read in the past, this old lens shouldn't be radioactive, and it isn't. The old 8 elements version was subsequently replaced with a 7 elements version, and some of these 7 elements versions are radioactive. For example, the Super Multi-Coated Takuma and the SMC versions, they're definitely radioactive, as are some of these seven element Super Takuma versions. I'm lucky enough to own two copies of the old eight elements lens. They are the same type, but my later copy does in fact have some radioactive glass, 
Not a lot, but it's there. Again, something introduced in later copies of the same lens version. This variation gives me the opportunity to observe how the two lenses perform. The same design, but one with radioactive glass and one without. And interestingly, I have noticed a slight difference. I noticed it before I knew the second version was radioactive. Stop down, my second version, the radioactive one, seems to me to be slightly sharper and the rendering is slightly better, including the colours. And wide open, my first non-radioactive version has a dreamier, more washed out look, with a few more chromatic aberrations. And then there are other variations in readings across copies of the same version of lenses that are radioactive. For example, between these two super multi-coated Takuma 55 f1.8s. It must be caused by a different mix of radioactive glass. Before condemning Takuma lenses to a radioactive graveyard, I should point out that not all early or later Takuma lenses are radioactive. The use of radioactive glass was something confined to certain copies of the Takuma 50 and 55mm lenses, and a small number of other lenses. As we saw in that Camerapedia list, many, many other companies were selling radioactive glass as well. And it would be great if you could tell us about your favourite radioactive lens or lenses in the comments below, especially in other mounts to the M42 mount, which I personally happen to collect. So to conclude this part of the discussion, there are useful sources of information about radioactive lenses and tests of radioactive lenses on the internet, but it's important to recognise that there can be quirks from lens to lens out there. Sometimes you can tell from the serial numbers, and sources on the internet may be able to give you the correct serial number details for radioactive versus non-radioactive lenses. But unless you test your lenses yourself, you may never know for certain the level of radioactivity your own lenses have. And of course you may never want to know, but that's another thing. Now onto the discoloration of radioactive glass. Over many years, the radioactive particles in the glass can turn the glass a sort of yellowy brown or golden colour. You can see it here in this photo, or more dramatically in this photo, where I put some lighting under the lens to accentuate the colourings. This discoloration, commonly known as yellowing, can have a significant impact on images, an impact that was not part of the original intention of the lens designers. The lenses, when new, had clear glass, and indeed the discoloration can slow down the speed of a fast 50, so in reality an f1.4 fast lens is not as fast as that anymore. This leads us on to an interesting debate about these lenses. Should you keep their yellowed glass, or should you cure the colouring and return the glass to its original clear colour, and by doing so, reintroduce the original rendering and the faster f-stop equivalents, the speed and performance that the lens was originally designed to have? Different people have different opinions about this subject. Personally, I went through a period when I cured the glass of its colour, like I've done with this super multi-coated Takuma. But nowadays I leave the glass as is, and that's because I really like the golden tones the lenses produce, and I really like how they render. Here's a brief selection of photos taken with my radioactive lenses, the lenses that still have yellow glass. The lenses are especially good for autumnal or fall colours, and I tend to limit the use of my pan colour 50 f1.8 in particular to autumn photography. If you keep the discoloration of your radioactive lenses, you can always process the tones out and give the images a more conventional white balance. On the other hand, I find it much harder to recreate the golden tones if the image is not taken with the yellow glass. I've also found that using a yellow filter is not remotely the same. It doesn't generate the warmer colours I can get from the golden tones of yellowed radioactive glass. Filters simply don't give the same kind of look. If you do have a yellowed lens and you want to clear it, it's quite an easy process. You simply need to leave the glass out in the sunshine for long enough for the colouring to disappear, or an easy approach is to buy a lamp that emits UV light. This IKEA lamp works really well. I put a piece of aluminium foil behind the lens, and after a couple of days' exposure in total at both ends, the yellowing is gone. You can see the difference in the glass between these two lenses, lenses that have similar and quite high levels of radioactivity. Obviously the Takuma has been de-yellowed and the Tomioka hasn't. It's quite a contrast. An important observation here is that not all radioactive lenses have yellow glass, especially, that is, if people have de-yellowed them. You can see photos of radioactive lenses for sale on the internet, with glass that looks completely clear. And by the way, curing the glass of this discoloration is not curing the glass of radioactivity. The radioactivity will remain in the glass for a long, long time. I've also found out that some of my old lenses have golden yellow glass, but there's no sign of radioactivity. For instance, my early Super Takuma 50 f1.4 8 elements version has slightly discoloured glass, but it's definitely not radioactive. And take a look at this collection of Takuma 55's f1.8s. Before buying the Geiger Muller counter, I thought these two lenses circled must be radioactive. The Super Takuma, because as I've mentioned before it was on the lists, 
and it looks yellowed. And the Autotacuma. With this photo, where the golden colours are somewhat exaggerated, to be fair, it's not surprising that I thought it was radioactive. But it's not radioactive. Or if it is, it has no measurable beta or gamma radiation using my Geiger-Muller counter. And finally, here are two Russian lenses, with old glass that was or has become tinted. Again, slightly exaggerated for effect. The Jupiter 9 on the left has rather nice golden yellow tones, but neither lens, as far as I can tell, is radioactive. So in conclusion, yellow glass is not a 100% guarantee of radioactivity. It's really not too unusual to see an old lens with yellow glass with no radioactive readings. And it's not too unusual to see clear glass in lenses that are in fact radioactive. Anyway, that's the end of my main videos on radioactive lenses. I've enjoyed putting them together and I hope you found them interesting and helpful. I'll continue to test different kinds of containers and material to store radioactive lenses. And if I can come up with a cheap and easy and safe solution that seems to work really well, I'll post a short video about that.